All right, it's another edition of our State of the Hockey. We're doing the State of the Arizona State Sun Devils ACH D1 team. We've got the head coach, Josh Brown, and we've got the assistant coach, Chad Bailey, with us. Gentlemen, welcome back. Thanks for having us. Yeah, so thank you. So it's uh, the end of the season, and uh, we're looking forward to prospect camp. We're looking forward to preparing for next season. Uh, we're in this clean, spanking new locker room. <laughs> Not new, but looks brand new in this locker room. So what's it been like since the season ended for you guys? Been bored. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think the season ended early for us. I wasn't ready for it to be done. I don't think anybody was, but uh, um, just excited to move forward into next next year. And it starts with our, our prospect camp this weekend. You know, when I talk about the state of the program or state of hockey, it's always nice to uh, go back and look backwards. And I know it's probably one of those seasons you guys would prefer to not think about, not talk about, maybe move forward and get a fresh start. But I know you had some guys that, that carried over for you and were leaders. I, I'm thinking mainly of your captain, Austin Ehrlich, had a, uh, a great season again, despite maybe having some uh, some team troubles, <laughs> getting up and down and scoring and those types of things and the win-loss record. But tell us a little bit about Austin and what he meant to your program. Uh, he was everything. If, if you know, he, he was on for the game, that, that meant we were going to have a chance. And uh, you know, most nights I, I think we did have a chance. And you know, Earl was our leader, and I, I think that he uh, – he had, he had a hell of a season. He, uh, you know, he led our team in points, and he was a leader in the locker room, on the ice, off the ice, everything. I mean, he was he was Mr. ASU. So when we talk about the Desert Southwest and the ACHA down here, obviously there's some rivalries. You got U of A, you got UNLV popping up now. So, so tell me what the season was like with UNLV jumping up into D1 and and what they're bringing to the program to to make everybody better, right? You know, it's it's really exciting that we have more competition closer to us. I mean, not having to hop on a plane and instead taking a four-hour, five-hour bus ride over to Vegas or them coming to us. I think next year we have them five times on our schedule. We'll have them three times here, and then we'll head over to uh, to Vegas. I think the the first weekend of our season. So we're we're really excited to have those guys up at the Division One level. It's great competition, and I know Z and those guys do a great job over there. Tell me about the the building of the program and. Now you guys had a chance with your uh, NCAA program for the last couple of years, but what's it meant for your ACHA club program? As far as what? Well, as far as having them, that, that level of competition above you, have you seen any uh, additions in players or caliber of player? Hasn't it really affected you guys? Um, it has and it hasn't. I mean, it's stirred up a lot of interest, um, right. but you know, we're, we're not seeing guys get sent down, and the goal is for our program is to bring in the caliber caliber of player that if they need somebody then they're, they're right here in, in the NCAA team's backyard like they they we have a really good relationship with that program and that team and like we we know their their staff we talk to them daily we're good friends and uh they they know our roster up and down and they know who if, if they need somebody they they know who they can come to Arizona State's had a tradition of being pretty strong making for the national tournament you guys made it a couple of years ago and I always ask everybody, what's it like to, uh, to play in that national tournament at the D1 level? It's like no other, is it? It's a lot of fun. It's you know a lot of pressure um, for our guys, and I know that they you know, two years ago we had, we had a lot we had a blast there in Columbus, and uh, we hope to get back to Dallas this this upcoming year. So right now we're, we're talking on the eve of a prospect camp coming up, so. Tell me a little bit about it. How many numbers you got in? It's a two-day thing, right? Friday, Saturday? Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday morning. Okay. Um, so uh, camp will start um, tomorrow at, I think, 6 o'clock. Registration starts at 5. And then uh, it, it's 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 going to be really well run. We're going to have admissions people here answering questions. Our whole staff will be here. We're going to give a tour of the locker room. And then it starts out Friday. We'll have two practices. Uh, we have four teams of guys, so we'll... we'll Two teams will practice together, and then they'll play the next day. And then the same thing with the with the second group. Uh, we'll have a goalie session on on Saturday, uh, and then Sunday two more games. So it's it's a full weekend of hockey, and kids will also get a tour of campus, which is nice. What do you think the numbers are going to be, or what do you expect for numbers right now? Uh, probably about between 50 and 60 guys will come okay. out. Um, a lot of guys from out of state, so it's nice that they're able to come out and make the trip and see what ASU hockey and, and ASU the school is all about. So uh, I know you guys were talking earlier about trying to do something out of state. Is that something that's going to happen or not happen? Or It's still happening. Um, we're uh, planning for uh, June in Minnesota. Um, the same weekend uh, our women's team will be there. Um, it'll be a three-day camp pretty similar to the prospect camp here and um, 
we're still filling that up uh, every day. So Lindsay was telling me that she had a great response up there. I'm guessing you guys are seeing the same from, from a state like Minnesota that's got a lot of hockey players looking for places to play, right? Yeah, there's lots of lots of emails and questions and, you know, stirring up some interest. I mean, that, that's really our goal is to have juniors and seniors that uh, are, are up there um, and create interest for, for hockey in Arizona because I know uh, ACHA doesn't have a big presence in Minnesota, but it's definitely a great option for a lot of juniors and seniors and guys who are moving on to play junior hockey and what do I do after I'm done with juniors? Um, not everybody uh, can play NCAA Division One hockey and we want to let them know there, there's another option. Their, their hockey career doesn't have to be over. Guys, let's take a quick break. We'll come right back. We'll talk about the future of Arizona State hockey, uh, especially the ACHA D1 level. We'll be right back. All right, we're back with the uh, the two brain trusts, I guess we're going to call them, of ACHA D1 hockey at uh, Arizona State. And uh, guys, tell me a little bit about what you're trying to build for next year. I know, like we talked earlier, that last season wasn't what you expected or wanted. But uh, what do you do to uh, change it back to, to ASU style hockey? Well, we lost a great leader in Austin Ehrlich this year. He graduated. Also, Preston Ames. Those are two key pieces to our team the last couple of years. And um, you know, glad to see them them both moving on. Uh, I know Preston Ames is actually going to uh, go over to Sweden next year and play pro hockey. And uh, as far as Earl, he's still up in the air whether he wants to start his career or whether he wants to continue to pursue hockey. But um, you know, we're we're really excited about some of the uh, recruits that we have coming in. We're, we're, we're obviously trying to replace some leadership so we have some some leaders sort of from some junior programs that will be coming in and uh, just keep on moving forward we're, we're really excited about these guys and schedule wise you already touched a little bit about what you have going on with uh, UNLV but I'm guessing the, the Cactus Cup series is something you guys want to get that thing back I bet right oh definitely absolutely yeah so, so you got U of A tell me a little bit about some of the trips that, that you already have on the schedule um, it's, it's a very similar schedule that we had this year. Um, we, we play our normal WCHL schedule. We play Colorado, Colorado State, Central Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Missouri State, Arkansas, uh, and then the bad guys down south in Tucson. <laughs> um, we, we'll also go up to Minot and play Minot State in, uh, in Jamestown University. Uh, UNLV's on our schedule and GCU as well. So tell me a little bit about that trip up north again. Uh, every time when you guys go up there, I want to hear about it from every every coach <laughs> that does that trip. It's brutal, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, the last two years we've gone up there in January. So we, we leave Phoenix and it's 80 degrees and we get up there and it's negative 30. Right. Like I, uh, I've experienced some cold weather being from Michigan, but nothing. Nothing, nothing like no, that. Nothing like that. That's for sure. Uh, so we, we got a little smarter this year and we're going to be taking that trip in November. October. Oh, very good. So we go up there first this year, so hopefully it'll maybe be zero out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, we can go outside and walk around a bit instead of just hotel to bus, bus to rink, rink to bus, bus to hotel. Um, so it should be an uh, easier trip for us this year. So, so the trip is difficult, but the competition is pretty darn good too, isn't it? It's very good. Both those programs are, are very strong. Uh, I know we, we, we enjoy the strong competition. Um, you know, it pushes us to get better as coaches and as players. So let's go recap kind of the, the future coming up. Prospect camp is this weekend. We're looking at June for the one up in Minnesota. Then when do you guys get back on the ice again with the guys down here? Um, we'll have a uh, conditioning camp first week of school. So I think August 13th our conditioning camp starts and then uh, our tryouts is, is the week after and then we get going right away. Talk about ACHA hockey and what it means to to a student coming in here, the, the opportunity that you get to play ACHA hockey at a university the size and the, the caliber of ASU. I think it's pretty special. Um, a lot of guys come in here not knowing anybody and um, just being in this room for six months with each other, they, they create great friendships. Um, they develop their hockey skills and all while they're going to school and getting a great education. I think ASU has a lot to offer um, many different types of students. Um, and I think they they just grow as people in this locker room. So a lot of talk, obviously, with the, the new facility coming on board in a couple of years on campus. What does that mean to you guys? Uh, it's huge. Uh, we're really excited to. I think it, it'll be 
they're breaking ground here pretty soon, I think, and uh, should be done for the 2021 season. That's everything I've heard, and uh, you know our, our whole program will move over there, and uh, you know it'll be sad to leave Oceanside. It has a lot of history with ASU hockey, but excited for the new facility for sure. So right now, do you have recruits that are, that are asking about it, people talking about it, people understand that it's coming on board? Yes, every, everyone all the asks time. About they're, it. they're wondering when it's start, when it's getting started, wondering when it's good, getting finished, um, and the, a lot of times it's answers we just don't have yet. Let's uh, let's finish up by telling us what this makeup of this next year's team you want to do. Where do you want to be strong? What what kind of guys do you want to bring in here? What what's the part of your team that you want to see? Uh, ASU hockey represent next season? I, <clears throat> I, I think that uh, wh whoever we bring in, we, we want guys that want to continue to grow as hockey players, grow as people, and, and get a great education. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, we're, we're looking to bring in some leadership to replace guys like Ames and Blumenfeld and Austin Ehrlich, um, who've been uh, a big part of our program for the last four years. Uh, so replacing those guys is going to be tough, but we're, we're doing our best to, to bring in some guys of that caliber. You know, we looked a couple of years ago, you guys were pretty well balanced. You had offense, you had defense, you had great goaltending. Uh, is there any specific area, offense, defense, or goaltending that you feel like you need to drastically improve in, or is it just kind of an overall thing? Just an overall thing at this point. All right, guys, I appreciate your time as always. Have a great summer. We'll look forward to seeing you guys uh, not only at the Prospect Camp, but we'll see you up in Minnesota as well in June. Sounds great. Sounds good. Thank you for having us.